The elaborate relationship between play caller and quarterback is the most critical, crucial in football. The play caller's job is ultimately to get guys open, and the quarterback's job is to find those open receivers. Sean Payton executed this relationship perfectly in his days with Drew Brees, a legendarily machine-like mastermind who could find the open receiver seemingly every single play. This is what Payton wants, he needs, and what he's expecting with Oregon quarterback Bo Nix. The Broncos just drafted him 12th overall, he's preparing to start right out of the gate, so today we'll dive into what Payton's scheme is, what Nix's strengths and weaknesses are, and if this is the right match for Denver to finally find their guy. Payton's offense is basically divided into two buckets. There is the under-center, hard, beat-em-up run game paired with play action. This is with heavier personnel. And there's the shotgun spread game, which is probably more of what you think of when you think of Breeze. Payton's offense has always centered around the run game, where he wants to be under-center with heavier personnel. Last year, they used 21 personnel, the eighth most in the league, which means two running backs, a tight end, two receivers, and they were also eighth in 22 personnel, switch in a second tight end for the second receiver. Peyton wants to pound you on the ground in the run game with a fullback and a big hulking offensive line and physically dominate you in the trenches, so that's his primary objective. Then off of that, when the defense starts selling out to stop the run game, it's time to rip your heart out with play action. His calling card is making both the run and pass look the same by pairing concepts together. One of his favorites is Spider 2Y Banana, which is an excellent short yardage concept almost guaranteed to convert a third and short. Here is Bo Nix running it in preseason. You know it's a base concept that they're gonna roll out when the real action begins if they're using it in preseason. This is with 22 personnel, two tight ends, two running backs. So the Broncos are trying to signal, we are about to pound the rock. Spider 2 is a full slide to the left to sell the hard run fake, which leaves the end completely unblocked. With Michael Burton screaming at the defensive end, this looks like the end is getting blocked for Javante Williams to rush inside of him. But Spider 2 Y Banana has Burton faking the block and running to the flat, so Javante can kick out the end. Defenses have definitely gotten better at defending it, but Nix is still able to find Adam Troutman open. That's not to say the play works 100% of the time. Sometimes defenses are very ready for it and gets completely shut down. But every play isn't going to work every down. It's the plays off of it that separates great play callers from good ones. Later in the game from a different formation, they use the same run action. But this time Burton does kick out the unblocked end, and Samaj P. Ryan takes the handoff 20 yards down the field. Peyton is excellent at setting up concepts with the run that look the same as the play action they're paired with. But last year he didn't have the right quarterback, and it showed. According to Warren Sharp of Sharp Football, since 2005, out of 509 quarterbacks, last year Russ had the highest percentage of passes behind the line of scrimmage, the second highest within five yards of the line of scrimmage, and the lowest percentage of passes between five to 15 yards down the field of once again 509 sampled quarterbacks. I've previously done videos about how Russ can't see the middle of the field, so basically, it was all screens and checkdowns or big passes down the field. It was the same issue when Peyton tried to spread out the field from shotgun. This is really where Breeze made his money identifying the right matchups pre-snap and then executing with precision accuracy post-snap. Well, this isn't Russ's game. He struggled to target the entire area of the field when Peyton spread things out. And typically, quarterbacks do better when they're executing play-action concepts, because the defense is getting manipulated right after the snap and play-action is usually designed to go to one certain receiver, rather than the quarterback having to read all five eligibles. But Russ consistently didn't throw to open receivers out of play-action either, and Peyton realized he needed to draft a new quarterback. Enter Oregon's Bo Nix. Peyton needs a QB who can command an offense, throw it to the open receivers he's confident he'll scheme open, and can lead the Broncos into a new era. And Nix fits that mold. At Oregon, they were an extremely schemed offense, meaning the plays were designed to throw to one specific guy. 
and you could either say that's a positive or a negative with Nick's consistently accurately hitting that specific receiver. The positive is that he'll follow what the coach wants him to do and execute the game plan. But the negative is that if Peyton can't scheme that first receiver open, can his quarterback get to the second, third, and fourth read? Breeze could, but that is the question with Nick's. You give him the answer to the test, throw to your first read, and he completed an insane 77% of his passes last year at Oregon. But there are times when that first read isn't open, and with defenses as good as they are in the NFL, that first read often won't be available. For him to become good, he'll need to improve at moving on to his next progression. He flashed that he was able to, just not consistently. Here against Oregon State, the Beavs look like they're in cover zero, all out blitzing him, so he'll have to get rid of the ball quick. But they drop out at the snap. They flood the three receiver side, which is Nick's first read, but look at how calm and poised he is sitting in the pocket and delivering this backside dig, advanced stuff for a young quarterback coming all the way back across the field with his eyes without really getting to check if the dig is open earlier in the down before he throws it. Now, there are little issues that he showed in college. There are times when his footwork gets him into trouble. Like here, you can see him slightly drifting towards the looping pass rusher, which creates just a little more pressure on him. And there are other times when it's a real issue where he's creating pressure with poor footwork and pocket management. Since the Drew Brees offense was predicated on quick precision passes that slowly marches the offense down the field, Nix doesn't have the luxury of creating extra pressure with poor footwork because that could lead to drive-killing sacks. He does, however, have something that Peyton's never really had, which is mobility and an ability to create outside the pocket. This is a three-level sale concept where he's trying to hit one of these receivers, but Washington floods the same side of the field and look at how he creates by throwing his receiver open back shoulder. He can run the option and scrambles too. Peyton's never really had that type of guy. But the real question is, when projecting him to the NFL game, how well will he be able to cycle through his reads? And so far, mixed results. His very first preseason game, he was spotty. Peyton wants him to work the slot option concept with their best receiver in Cortland Sutton. This was the Michael Thomas role for a while. But when the Colts blanket him, the stick knot is coming open backside and Nix's footwork just isn't what it needs to be. You can see how his eyes get ahead of his feet to where his lower half is still facing the slot option, but his eyes are looking at the seam. So he hesitates, throws off his back foot, too far up the seam, incomplete. Later on, the Colts are clearly in cover two zone and the Broncos have the perfect cover two beater in smash. With the safety playing the deep half, the cornerback has to choose between guarding the corner or flat. But when Nix gets to the top of his drop and he has the corner about to come wide open, he doesn't throw it, freaks out in the pocket, and instead of rocketing in that backside dig like we saw against Oregon State, he panics in a clean pocket, throws off balance, and it's once again incomplete. You can't take too much away from his first preseason action, his first entire preseason, hell, his first NFL season. But he did quickly make progress. He looked much better in his second game against Green Bay in Week 2, where he was more confident in the pocket, his footwork was cleaned up, and it was clear that he has been working on his weaknesses. Peyton wants his quarterbacks to play in rhythm with their footwork, which means Nix gets to the top of his drop, then releases the ball. Here he's perfect where he hits the dagger route on time, then later identifies that the Packers are dropping into two deep zone on third and 12, and when he sees the Tampa linebacker dropping deeper into that middle area, immediately hits the over the middle curl for a conversion on third and long. Sean Payton feels like he has found his guy. Nix is his kind of man who can hit the layups that he's created, and then hopefully can elevate the Broncos offense beyond just scheme as well. Nix is mobile enough to play under center and execute play action concepts, and when Peyton wants to spread the field out, he's flashed ability to be able to hit not just his first read, but progress to multiple. In my opinion, he still needs time before he starts to really roll, so I wouldn't expect success right out of the gate. But it's hard to count out Sean Peyton for long. Eventually, he will get Nix right and get his offense back to where it needs to be. 
Even with Russell Wilson cooked, the Broncos still finished 8-9 and he still completed 66% of his passes, 26 tuds, and 8 interceptions. If that's the floor, Bo Nix should be just fine. And if he can slowly but surely continue to develop like he showed from preseason games 1-2, to two, the Broncos do have their guy and they can become Saints 2.0.